gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm David Clark. If you're not new here, I'm still David Clark. And today we're going to talk about snowmobile exhausts. So recently, one of my subscribers, Thomas O'Callaghan, asked me if I could do a quick video on removing the exhaust on my 05 Rev. Um, hopefully I'm not too late for this, Thomas. I know it's been a couple of weeks since you asked that and you've probably figured it out. I kind of thought that was going to be a really quick video if all I did was show you how to remove that exhaust. So I'm going to talk about snowmobile exhausts in general. So Thomas, I will cover how to remove the exhaust from the 05 Rev because it's a little bit different from this one, but basically most snowmobile exhausts are going to be similar. So I'm going to go over the various components of the snowmobile exhaust, what they do, things that you should know about it, and uh, different ways for removing them. For some of you more experienced riders, then some of this video may be a little bit basic, uh, but if you don't learn something new, then hopefully you can share your experience. We all got to start somewhere, so hang around. So this is a 97 MXZ 670. Uh, my other sled is a 2005 MXZ 600. There are some slight differences in the exhaust and we'll go through that. But most snowmobiles are gonna have the same components. All right, the first component of your snowmobile exhaust is the exhaust manifold. Now, typically you'll hear this called a Y pipe because typically it's going two into one, right? The majority of your snowmobiles have two cylinders uh, and the manifold is shaped like a Y. So your Y pipe connects to this pipe. Usually it's just referred to as a pipe. It's actually called a tuned pipe or an expansion chamber. All right, so both my slides have an expansion chamber. Now, not all snowmobiles do, right? This is something that's specific to a two-stroke motor. All right, if you've got a four-stroke snowmobile, then your exhaust may simply go from the manifold through a straight pipe into the muffler. Uh, but on a two-stroke motor, we've got what's called an expansion chamber or a tuned pipe. So if you look at the shape of this pipe, it uh, starts off very narrow, it gets wider towards the middle, and then it narrows down again. So that's, um, it's shaped that way for a very specific reason. So if you took shop in high school, you probably remember a four stroke motor has four strokes in its engine cycle. It has an intake stroke, compression stroke, power stroke, and exhaust stroke. And between each of those strokes, the cylinder is sealed off with a valve. Now a two stroke motor doesn't have valves. It relies on the movement of the piston to close off the intake transfer port and the exhaust port during its combined intake and exhaust stroke. All right, with a two stroke motor, because you don't have valves, it relies on back pressure to stop that fuel air mixture from escaping, right? So that exhaust comes down that pipe, it hits the other side where it gets wider and narrower, that creates a back pressure wave back towards the piston. So that's what the tuned pipe is for. That's also one of the reasons why modifying the exhaust on a two-stroke can actually negatively impact your performance. Now on this model, I've also got this little elbow pipe here that joins the tuned pipe to the muffler. That's not common of all sleds, and when we get to uh, my 600, you'll see it doesn't have it. Uh, the muffler attaches straight to the tuned pipe. Um, but the last part of your exhaust system is this muffler. All right, so those are the basic components of your snowmobile exhaust. There may be some variations from model to model, but that's basically it for a two-stroke snowmobile exhaust. All right, now you can't really talk about snowmobile exhaust without talking about aftermarket mufflers or cans, they're called sometimes. So they're basically an aftermarket modification to the stock exhaust on your sled. Now you're going to have similar legislation in your area, but here in Ontario, it's governed by the Motorized Snow Vehicle Act. And what that act says is that if you're operating a snowmobile, it has to have a muffler in good working order. And it has some specific modifications you're not allowed to do. So you can't have a muffler with a cutout, it can't be gutted, it can't be a straight exhaust. So make sure you look into that act before you put an aftermarket exhaust on your sled, because you may end up getting fined. So let's talk about removing your exhaust. So the first thing you need to know is it's held together with springs, right? So your exhaust manifold is going to be bolted to the motor, everything else is held together with springs. And there's a couple of advantages to that. First off, your exhaust is subjected to a lot of vibration, not just from the motor itself, but every time you hit a bump, every time you hit a mogul. So having it held together with springs gives it a little bit of flexibility. If it was all bolted together over time, it would break. Now, the other advantage, your motor is really kind of shoehorned in there under the hood, especially on these newer sleds. You're going to have to take that exhaust off fairly frequently to do any work on the sled. So again, having it held together with springs instead of bolts makes it that much easier. So to remove your exhaust, you just need to take those springs off. So you need anything really that lets you grab the end of the spring, stretch it, and unhook it. So there's a few ways to do it. I've seen videos online, and actually I did one about uh, a way that you can take your springs off with wires. You know, there's a lot of those types of videos out there, right, where guys will say, oh, you can do this, you don't need to buy the expensive tool. And you know what? I'm not knocking those guys, because when you don't have the tool, uh, knowing those little tricks is a godsend. But I'm a big believer in using the right tool for the job. 
I would avoid using things like vice grips or needle nose pliers to pull those springs loose. Yes, you can do it, but they're really prone to slip. And I've actually racked up my hands a couple of times doing that. So there's a number of spring removal tools on the market. This is the first one I bought. This is just a real cheapie. I think it was like 10 bucks. So it does give you a nice plastic handle, gives you some good leverage and the little hook on the end that you can grab that spring and pull it off. All right, this, in my humble opinion, is the best exhaust spring tool on the market. This is the exhaust spring tool from Woody's. It's funny, you think all it does is take springs off. How much better can it be? A lot better. So they've really thought of everything. And I find this with Woody's, actually. The design of anything that they make is really, really good. Like, obviously, they're snowmobilers, and they really spend some time thinking about the design of things. I did um, another video about their track tension tool. And again, I found so many advantages to their tool versus some of the other ones on the market. But yeah, this spring puller, if you look at it, so you got a nice big handle that's easy to hang on to. It's much longer than a lot of those other cheaper tools. And the advantage to that becomes obvious when you get one of these newer sleds. So on this Revan, I'll show you a couple of the springs. You really have to get up underneath to get at some of the springs. Uh, so this additional length is a real benefit. But the real advantage to this tool is when you look at the end of it, how it's designed, there's a couple of features on this, and I'll show you a close-up. Now, first off, you can use this like you can any spring puller to hook on and pull the spring. But it's also notched in a couple of different ways. So firstly, you'll notice you can push on it. Uh, so you've got the hook there, but you've also got a notch underneath so you can push a spring. And again, that's an advantage. Some of these newer sleds, there's absolutely zero room under the hood. You've got some real awkward angles to get at. So being able to push on a spring is a huge advantage. You've also got some little notches on the back and the front of it. That's if you have to twist, right? So if you have to get into an awkward spot and twist a little bit, you can actually hook the spring on both sides with that notch and pull it. So this tool may be slightly more expensive than some of the other ones on the market, but we're still talking it's like in the 20 buck range. It's nothing that's going to break the bank. So if you're going to have a sled for a while, you're going to end up taking your exhaust off. I would really think about having one of these in your toolbox. So with this tool, actually any of these springs are a walk in the park to remove. Okay, the other springs, just to take note of, you do have um, metal straps that hold the... Uh, the heat shield on your pipe and they're actually held together with springs as well so just to remove your exhaust we don't need to worry about that so there's the one here uh, the four back on the y pipe and then we need to get to the two on the muffler okay now we've got four springs up underneath holding the tune pipe to the y pipe and actually again with this woody's tool it's long enough to easily reach those springs so you have two more springs here holding the muffler onto the tune pipe. And again, this is where the extra le length of this Woody's tool comes in. You can go over or under this frame here and hook on that spring quite easily and take it off. Once we got all those springs out, we can just go ahead and remove that pipe. It really is that easy, okay? So a couple of things to keep in mind. Obviously, be careful of dropping the springs down in underneath. You don't want them falling into your motor where they're hard to get to. Uh, the second thing to be aware of is that in between your pipes, you may have a gasket. Uh, usually, that'll come out with the pipe. It'll be stuck up inside, but just watch for that. You don't want that dropping out. So our last spring attaches the muffler to the chain case here. All right, so once you take the springs off, you take the tuned pipe out of here. The last thing that you need to do before removing this muffler is take this sensor out of here. So if you've got a fuel-injected sled, you're probably going to have one of these sensors. This is an EGT or an exhaust gas temperature sensor. All right, so if you've got a fuel-injected sled, it's going to use the uh, data from that sensor to adjust the mixture because the temperature of your exhaust gas actually tells you a lot about how lean or rich your sled is running. You're going to need a 17 mil wrench uh, to turn that sensor out. All right, and that's it. Once you take that sensor out of there, that muffler will come right out. And when you reinstall it, just reverse that procedure, right? Put each component in and put your springs back on. So you just hook one side up. And once again, I totally recommend that uh, you pick up one of these spring tools from Woody's. It comes in 10 and 15 inch lengths. So, you know, once again, it was way easier to reach some of these springs with this tool. All right, guys, I think that's it for this video. So if you learned anything or if you just had fun watching it, do me a favor, click that thumbs up. Until next time, I'm David Clark. Thanks for taking the time to watch. All right, guys, before I finish out, I just want to do a couple of quick shout outs. I know a lot of you guys that watch me have channels of your own and some of you do some really nice stuff. So I'm just totally at random uh, going to pick a couple of guys to do a shout out for. So uh, we got Max's Motorsports. He started uh, watching the channel a little while ago. We have uh, Pasty Boy. Pasty Boy, I love your stuff. Uh, so he... Uh, is in the U.S. He posts a lot of riding videos from Old Forge, New York. Doobie Boy 21, my buddy up in Quebec. He drives a Polaris, and he does some, some pretty cool riding videos as well. 
We got Bushcraft North of 60. He does some uh, Bushcraft stuff, some some riding stuff. Mark Bow rides Yamaha snowmobiles, uh, so you've got some riding videos, you got some hunting stuff. And last but not least, we got my buddy Logan. Logan has a channel called Team Thompson. Uh, he's fun to watch, he does a little bit of everything, so check him out. So guys, thanks so much for watching my channel and good luck with your own. Your manifold will be mol oh, molted. <laughs> here the last thing you need to do and now i love the products from woody's and i am not being paid to spit spay i love